In this video I'll be melting this cast iron weight plate in my microwave and I'll make a cast iron benchy. So what's your attention span? Because I'll be casting my benchy in iron I need to make my mold out of silicon carbide because it can take very high temperatures. You can even cast stainless steel if you want. You might think that silicon carbide is expensive and you're right, but it also depends where you buy it from. I don't buy it in small bags for like 20 euros. Instead, I buy them in large 25 kilogram bags and I buy them from sandblasting stores. This is the smallest grid silicon carbide they sell in the sandblasting store I buy it from. So whenever I need silicon carbide that's a bit more powdery, if I want to capture more details, I just use a serial grinder. It goes without saying that I only use this grinder to grind silicon carbide, sand and things like that. In other words, I do not use it for food. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'll just, I just need to measure how much silicon car carbide I'll be needing. So 565 grams I have of silicon carbide. I'm gonna add between 8 and 10% of sodium silicate, also known as water glass. Yeah, I'll go for 8%. It's around 45 grams. I'll use a bit of cheese wax to hold it to the table. So we just press it down as tight as we can. I like to use my fingers to make sure I, I can get into all the spots. Oh look, this this got loose. So first I like to kind of go slow and just make sure because the mold is on a small side I want to make sure that the bench stays you know, more or less in the center. And here's a tip, I like to make my mold a little bit taller. That way this lip, it kind of guides this press or the plunger, like so. It's easier that way. Don't you know, pump it up, you got to pump it up. So next step is freezing the mold. You can actually skip it if you want. But by freezing in mold, you can harden the silicon carbide and then you'll be able to remove it from this plastic mold without basically falling apart. In this case, you could probably open it without freezing, but I just like to freeze it. While we're waiting on the mold to freeze, let me tell you a little bit more about my setup and the changes I want to make. Regular viewers will know that I live in an apartment and I do my metal casting right here on my balcony. So the microwave sits on top of this super steady table. So I use this balcony a lot for my metal casting projects. The only issue, well, as you can see, I have occupied all the space and it can be really used for anything else other than hang some clothes occasionally. There's no space to put a swing chair and just chill. So I'm hoping to solve that issue. On the other side of the balcony, here's a 
curtain and behind it there's a storage space. So basically I want to get another table that's bigger, safer and has wheels so I could just push it into that storage space I showed you before when I'm done with my metal casting projects for the day. So that way we can, you know, just move the furniture around and enjoy this space for family activities. So I don't just use it for metal casting. Weaver sent me this stainless steel table and I think it's gonna solve all my problems. Let's see. Ta-da! Actually, it's the next morning because my SD card died. So I lost some footage that I recorded yesterday. Oh well, it happens. So I have my air fry for drying molds, microwave for melting metal, vacuum cleaner for vacuum casting, and another microwave just in case. And there's also a fire extinguisher, and I'll probably add a few more things. So I have all my setup right here on this table. The cool thing, when I'm done, I can just roll it and keep it in the place I showed you before. Nice one. I'll leave affiliate links in video description. Purchasing the table through those links help to support the channel. And you'll also find a 5% discount code that you can use on all Weaver products. Because I lost some footage, I had to make another mold so I could show you all the steps. But this time I printed the Benchy in translucent PLA because I actually think it burns out better. This mold I froze for one hour. I'll use my microwave kiln to burn out the mold. But first I need to cure the sodium silicate or the water glass and I'll do it by running my microwave on low power. I'll use my interval timer to control my microwave. It will run the cycle 1 minute on and 6 minutes off. After half an hour I turned up the power to 300 watts and after another half an hour to full power. After around 2 hours of microwaving the mold, I removed the foil full in molten plastic. At this point there's not much plastic left, so we can just microwave the mold for a few more minutes and it's ready to cast. So it only took me around two and a half hours to cure and burn out the mold. I could have done it much quicker, but here's the thing. I prefer to slowly heat up my mold so most of the plastic drips into the tray. Then I can remove it so it doesn't need to be burned. If you microwave the mold too fast, the plastic will just burn and there will be lots of smoke. I don't know about you, I think removing is a much better option. I need to break this weight plate into pieces. I find it easier if I make a few cuts. I have neighbors and windows. So I have approximately 140 grams of iron. Whenever I melt iron, I like to preheat it with a blowtorch first. That way it's faster to melt it. I grabbed one of my old crucibles and it was not hardened. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I explain it in the microwave metal melting video. After heating up the iron, I realized that the crucible had cracked. I decided to use it anyway because I knew that the iron once molten will be under that cracked line. Plus I have lots of experience using my crucibles and I knew that it's not gonna crack again. In other words, it might look dangerous to you, but it's a controlled situation. To melt iron you need lots of heat, so I microwave my chamber for 25 minutes. The mold is still hot because the kiln that's made out of ceramic fiber will keep the mold nice and toasty, even after half an hour. So there's lots of things you can do with only one microwave. 
It's so bright that it's even difficult to see. Unfortunately, the mold didn't fill completely. I would consider using it, but I really wanted to cast that chimney. To increase my chances, I filled the chimney with the wax. Here's the thing, I could have added some sprues and feeders and whatnot to make the metal flow differently. For example, I could have added a sprue right here, and that would probably make the bottom cast flawless or better. But the thing is, sprueing and all that stuff, it's not my strengths. But that's actually not the reason. The reason I don't want to do it is because the bottom doesn't need to look perfect. And because I live in an apartment, I want to avoid sanding, cutting and sewing. Sewing? 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 <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, as much as possible. So that's why I prefer to do it the way I do. One thing that does bother me is inconsistencies when I cast iron. This is actually not my first time when I do the Benchy. I did a video or a YouTube short a while ago. In that video I had temperature related issues. The iron was a little bit cold. This time the mold was hot, iron was hot, but the mold still didn't feel completely. There's one thing I always wanted to try when casting iron in silicon carbide molds. I wanted to try shaking the molds while I'm pouring the metal. Sure, you can shake the mold after you pour the metal, but the iron is very hot and it cools quickly. So by the time you put down the crucible, it might be too late. Before buying a vibrating motor or vibration motor without knowing if it's actually gonna work, I decided to try to shake the table with reciprocating saw. And that's where things went wrong. Yes, I used the same broken crucible. That's because I decided to do another mold on the same day and I just didn't have another crucible. It might look like a massive failure, but it wasn't. It was a controlled situation. I knew that the top part of the crucible can finally break off and when it did, I just put it aside. But my mistake was that I put it too close to the captain tape and it catched fire. I knew it's not gonna burn for too long because it's a high temperature resistant tape, so I didn't bother doing anything about it. Because the crucible was now much shorter, the tongues ended up covering the top part of the crucible. Obviously I didn't realize it at the time. So when I poured the metal, the tongues were on the way and some iron got spilled onto my brand new table. It's possible that I didn't realize it because the crucible was so bright it was just not easy to see what's going on. Yep, I messed up. This is probably the worst metal I could have spilled onto this table. If this would have been brass, copper, aluminum or anything like that, I could just scrape it off. But iron, because of the heat, I think I might have welded it to the table. I'm not sure.
Ooh, good, good, good. Obviously, there's a little bump, but that's all right. I wasn't planning to ruin the look of this nice table on the third day, but I guess it's even better that it happened because this way I can show you that indeed it's pretty good. If it can take some cast iron, what else do you want? I was not planning to use the table as a tray to catch the molten metal. It was supposed to be a secondary surface in case if things go wrong. I was originally going to use some kind of oven tray under my molds that could protect the table. I suppose subconsciously I wanted to show you the table because it was sent to me. Or maybe I just forgot to do it. I honestly don't even know the answer. Because my attention shifted from pouring the metal to oh my god, I just messed up the table and the captain tape is on fire. Well, the pour was not perfect. I did not pour enough metal. So the bottom of the Benji lacks some metal, but the rest of the ship is looking pretty good. So the shaking might have been helpful. So I made a new hardened crucible and I was going to give it another shot. On the video you can't really tell whether or not the table is shaking, but I can assure you that it is. I must say I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. The shaking definitely made a big difference. The only thing that didn't cast great is the inside of the cabin. And there could be a few reasons for that. I think I didn't press the silicon carbide into the cabin good enough. That's the reason why it didn't come out very nice. It was kind of a loose-ish grit silicon carbide. Luckily it doesn't matter because it fits the theme. The inside of the Benchy I made in YouTube short came out pretty nice. And speaking about nice, this Benchy I did not want perfect. I wanted it to look like an old rusty boat. So basically I just used some salt water to make the Benchy rusty. I hanged it above the water and I left the plastic jar in the sun for a few hours. And then I left the Benchy sitting on the microwave for overnight. So this is how the ship looks the next day. I did dunk it into this salt water twice last night, just in case. I 3D printed the mold to make a sand island. Then I mixed some sand with water glass. I microwaved it on a low power to cure the water glass. Just make sure to remove the binder clips. Now we can remove the plastic mold and then microwave it for a little bit longer. Here's one of my kilns. I'm gonna heat up the island in my microwave kiln so it can be bent. I wanna crack it so it would look like a dry lake or something like that. For the water I'll use some bottle glass. I melted the glass and I marked it with a benchy. 
So this is the way it ended up looking. The banshee obviously can be removed, it has not fused together with glass. You can also see some marks from the salt water. Now I can start the restoration channel and pretend that I find this banshee somewhere on the street. Oh look, I found an old iPhone 16 while I was diving. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and liking the video, because it really helps the channel grow. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters. With your support, I hope soon we can get a 3000 watt industrial microwave and melt the universe. You gotta take my ship and go for the ride. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go for the ride.